Tactical air power has always been important in the British concept of air warfare. In 1939, tactical units of the Royal Air Force had only limited capability, even though air defense was more important than support of the Army's field operations. By 1941, however, the situation had changed, and classic fighters, such as the Spitfires, transformed into tactical fighters armed with bombs, as well as built-in cannon and machine guns. Attacks on coastal shipping ports, naval vessels, and other targets near the coast of occupied Europe were also vital to the success of the Allied war against Germany. Here, the twin-engined bow fighter proved ideal. Fast and relatively agile at low speed, the bow fighter had heavy cannon armament that could be supplemented by a torpedo to the fuselage. The partner to the bow fighter was the fighter-bomber version of this classic multi-role warplane, the Mosquito. Built largely of a balsa and plywood sandwich material and powered by two Merlin engines, the Mosquito was very fast. The Mosquito possessed the higher speed, range and agility to roam further inland, despite the greater likelihood of encountering the German single-seat fighters. In one of its fighter-bomber versions, the Mosquito was armed with a medium-caliber machine gun to punch holes in the sides of coastal patrol ships. Another version could be armed with a torpedo and the Mosquito was most successful in its baseline form. This version made use of a fixed cannon and machine gun armament which cleared the anti-aircraft gunners from the decks of enemy ships. This was followed by bombs and unguided rocket projectiles to sink the ships. The Mosquito fighter bomber was highly successful along the coasts of northwest Europe. It was most formidable in the tight confines of Norway's coastline. Here, enemy vessels could hug the fjords and cliffs of rock-bound coasts with its frequent anti-aircraft gun placements. Despite the natural and man-made defenses, the Mosquito caused fearsome damage to the convoys on which Germany was largely reliant for raw materials, such as iron and nickel. Another major aspect of British tactical air power that developed during World War II was an airborne forces capability. The Germans had developed this new tactical arm during the 1930s and used it with minimal success in the opening stages of the war. The 
British were impressed with the idea of delivering troops by parachute and glider, and in the middle stages of the war, expended considerable effort towards the creation of a similar capability of their own. The aircraft most commonly used for the delivery of paratroopers was the American C-47 transport, known to British troopers as the Dakota. The standard troop-carrying glider was the elegant Horser. This could be towed by the Dakota, but another important towing aircraft was the Sterling. The Sterling had been created as the United Kingdom's first four-engine heavy bomber of World War II. Its performance in this role was indifferent, so it was adapted for service with the airborne forces, a job that made the most of its ability to tow a glider or carry troops. The British also made limited use of the Hamilcar heavy glider for the delivery of heavier equipment such as light tanks, light artillery, anti-aircraft guns, and trucks.